Plasma cutting with a CNC table can be very expensive and isn't really that accessible to everyone out there. What is accessible is plasma cutting by hand, but not everyone's that good at it. That's why we have Jake Legrand here to show us how it's done. So Jake, what do we got today? Well, we got a custom sign for actually my own uh, homestead. So gonna be spicing up the property. We got sunflower, that's my wife's favorite flower. We got some letters, so letters can be difficult, but that's not a problem. We're gonna dive into some ideas on how to approach that, and then we're just gonna start cutting and get into it. Well, so. before we can cut, we gotta see what we're cutting with, right? Let's go check out the machine. Cutmaster 70 plus, that's what we're using today, but what's the most important thing about plasma cutting, Jake? Well, we wanna be making sure that we have good dry air. Uh, in our case, we know that we have that. We're supplying with 100 PSI. After good dry air, we wanna have the right consumables. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm actually gonna be running 70 amps on this 16 gauge material, more than what it needs, but with the experience I have, I'm able to go at a faster pace, less dross, be able to move faster, that's the route I wanna go. If we're running 70, make sure we have 70 amp consumables in here. If you don't have the right consumables, that machine's not designed to run with that tip. So make sure your consumables match what you're reading on the machine. There are some additional tips you can put on this. So there's a thing called a drag tip, which I like to use that when I'm cutting straight lines because you know that you can set your torch at that height and simply drag. That's what I call a drag tip. For me, when I'm doing my, uh, my artistic work, I like to run without that drag tip because I can set my distance and I can actually see my arc. With those drag shields, it's got prongs on it so it can block your view. So I like to run without it and that's what we're gonna be doing today. There's more than one way to skin a piece of metal, and by skin, I mean put a design on it. What is your preferred way? So I've actually upgraded. I used to use paper, but now I use projector. So I do all the design on my iPad, and then in this case, we use just your modern day projector. So I just sent the PDF, plugged it in the projector, and here we are. We got some different different parts on here that are gonna be a little bit tricky, right? So yeah. like, tell me what's your plan for cutting all this out with this flower it's going to be a little tough because two things we're going to be able to move quick run at 70 amps but we're still going to put a lot of heat because we're cutting all these individual petals out mm -hmm. so what my plan is is we're going to start here it's going to naturally warp so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down to the letters and start cutting here and what's going to happen is that residual heat that's all up here it's going to start dragging through this material by the time i get to here we're going to have balances of heat. Um, just in my experience of what I've seen, I used to you know, always go left or right, you end up with a banana chip. So being able to work around, um, that's gonna be the game plan here. And probably the last thing I'll do is the actual border. I found that if you cut the border first, same reason of why we're doing this first and then moving, I'm cutting that last so that way we can give the perimeter of the sign one final heat. So it's, it has the chance to contract and expand and then by the time I'm done, all that stress is released. All right, well enough talking, let's start cutting. But first we gotta get our PPE on, right? All right, so we're gonna dive into this. Uh, I like to do some dry runs, basically to see where my areas are gonna be tight in terms of reach. So obviously the first one's gonna be this far one, but that's okay, because everything through here, I'm comfortable, I'm able to flex, I like it. That's not terrible, because I can still be like this. And if I have to, I'll just come to the other side and I know I'll be able to reach it. Shouldn't be a problem. Now are you going to be pushing or pulling the torch? I like to do both. Just like the ABCs of welding, there's ABCs of plasma cutting. You have to be comfortable because what ends up happening is a lot of people like to get that elbow down. All of a sudden, you, you only have wrist motion. You can slide, and that's what I like to do. I like to put light pressure on my elbow. Mm -hmm. And it's like for this cut, for instance, I like to be way out here and then just slide on through. Let me kick on this fume extractor. We don't want to be breathing in all those nasty plasmas. Oh, yes. So I want to talk about a couple things I saw you doing in there. Okay. First off, travel speed. How important is it to maintain a consistent travel speed? We are running hot. So we don't want to go too slow because what will end up happening is that kerf width, which is the distance from one side of the arc to the other, is much wider than at a lower amperage. So as you're cutting through, you're going to end up cutting more of the thing that you want to keep. So in this case, we're running really quick. And with this RT stuff, I'm not too concerned about staying on the lines because I know what I want the shape to look like because you can still see a lot of the color still mm -hmm. left. If I'm doing letters, 
which we'll get to, I really like to stick to my lines so that way we have nice straight letters. But on something like this, I'm okay with going outside the lines. As, as I'm cutting, I go, whoops, not a problem. Yeah. We'll fix it in the end. Another thing I kept seeing you do was yep. you're doing these loops. Yes, it's like on this one, the reason why I don't do it here, obviously we didn't end up having a big circle at the end. We don't want that. When I know I'm coming to a termination and I need to come right back, you need to get in and out. Because if you stay there any, any long, especially at 70 amps, you're gonna blow up that and it's gonna keyhole. Now we're coming back to this side, same reason. If I go a little past, circle back, I can come right back to that point and that tip is cooled off just enough that it's not gonna blow away when I come back to it. You gotta think, you're heating up the entire way you're coming to this point, so it's getting hot, 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 hottest. Let's go past it, drag that heat past. Circle, come back into it. And then we're gonna just pierce all these? Yes. When you pierce with a plasma cutter, what's important? You wanna make sure you're not shooting those sparks right back at you. So even at 70 amps, if you come right 90 degrees, you are gonna have some molten metal pop up. If you have just a slight angle, especially something this thin, that gives it enough time to blow through and that, that slag is actually gonna blow away from your cup. These, I'll probably do the circles a little bit bigger. I'll probably just do a little drag and a little whoop, whoop, something like that. A little whoop. Yeah, we like to whoop around here. I like it. A little hoopla. All right, well, let's get to whooping. All right. We got some slag, how do you get that off? Oh, that's not slag, that's dross. You right. So, that pops off real easy. Actually, if we get a wire wheel, that'd just scuff right off. But, coming back to that plunging, this is exactly why we do this. Because there you have visual evidence that that molten metal is coming away from the torch versus blowing back up into, up into it. it. Yeah. Ruined and, consumables, huh? Yeah, exactly. And so we did some different sizes because Seeds aren't the same size. Organic. Exactly, organic right. art. When you come to these letters, you're talking about you kind of left some play room over there with your line. Are you gonna cut on the inside, or the outside, or right on your line when it comes to letters? Because you say you do them a little different. Yes, so on letters, I like to be on the inside because, let's be honest, we're, we're humans. We're gonna have a little whoop here and there. So coming to the inside, and as you can see, when I come to the inside, that line is still there. So. For instance, if these straight portions don't look so straight when I'm looking straight on, I can come back and say, you know what, I just want to remove a little bit more of that line. And by leaving it, it gives me a frame of reference of where it was supposed to be. It's not a problem. We go back to the stencil and we get it done. Get it done. Mm -hmm. All right, let me get this fume extractor on again. All righty. Burning hot. You're a machine, dog. You're about to cut these out, right? Oh, yes. Can you save me a ribeye, maybe a filet or two? Maybe an extra T-bone. Big thing to keep in mind, watch his standoff that he's maintaining with his hands. All right, Jake, you are cooking, man. All you have is the outside, yes. but you're making some pretty straight lines. People will use a fence mm -hmm. or like a ruler or something to just kind of butt up yep. against to get yep. it, but how do you get such straight lines without one? It's gonna sound funny, but I try to act like 
a CNC. I try to be as stable as possible because anytime you add in any extra arm movement, you're giving yourself a chance basically to fail and have a wonky cut. You know, I like to go out to that farthest point and then I move my whole body. If you look back, you probably saw that I was yeah, using almost out here. Yeah. If I stay locked in, I can have a much better cut versus trying to bring it to me. Just with the experience, I mean, I guess I've been cutting since 2015. Um, just figuring out that, that method of staying locked. I don't really use a straight edge. The only time I ever do is I'm, if I'm ripping material. But in this case, that's not what we're doing. You, you whip through this thing really fast. Let's flip it over yeah. see the back side. Yeah, that tells the story. Still gonna have dross. It's almost impossible not to get any. Here you can see travel speed was perfect. One thing to note on this is that consumable was a used one when we started. And we did this all in one consumable. So when you have a good tuned machine, good air, clean air, you can you get can good results. Yeah. Overall, I'm really happy with this because a lot of this, if we were just to bang the sign, a lot of it come off. The reason why we're not gonna do that is when you have these flimsy components, mm -hmm. you'll end up bending. bending it. So what I like to do on these is I get a wire wheel and a lot of those, make sure you got your safety glasses on because these are projectiles mm. when that wire wheel hits. And then we go back with a, a series of flap discs, clean it up, and then I usually flip it over, clean the front, and then we finish it out. Where yeah. can they find your stuff? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube is all the Grand Metalworks, and then Facebook is LMW the Grand Metalworks. Check out Jake's work. If you want to hear even more about his process, we do have a podcast that he yeah. was on. Check that out. It's down in the description. And if you want to check out more of the equipment that we used here from Aesop, check it down in the links. Until next time, we'll see you out there. Ha, 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 ha.